Remember the music we used to play, bro? Oh, yeah. The intro music? I just got nostalgic. We're live! What is up, Stone Coat fam? It's Friday afternoon or evening if you're on the East Coast. We're live. We're going to have a lot of fun today. This is going to be a unique show. The viewers are going to choose the adventure, and I have a couple amazing announcements. So you better stick to the end of the video. I already got my epoxy mixed up. I'm going with Stone Coat's Art Coat. And I mixed for two minutes with a paddle mixer. Midway through, I scraped the sides. This is an important step. If you don't start out with a good mix, you're not going to cure right. So mix two minutes, scrape the sides, mix again for another minute. And then I divided this epoxy up into three separate mixing cups. I've got white dye. I've got white mica and black mica, all from Stone Coat Countertops. This is our black marble kit, but I threw in some white dye. I'm gonna do a, you know, melded marble uh, piece. I'm gonna get a base down with these three colors, just using a hair, tiny amount of that black, because as, as I'll show, that black goes a really a far way. So if you wanna keep a lighter countertop, we're gonna go light on the black, but you all are gonna tell me what to do. I've got some accent colors here to choose from, when it comes time, you guys are gonna let me know. I'll mix up some colors. We got the magic trowel, we got a Bondo spreader sticks. It's gonna be a wild show. Uh, for, so first off, guys, let me know where you're watching from. Let us know in the comments below. We're also gonna be doing Q&A throughout today's entire show. We got Nathan behind the camera. We got Big Chris behind the command center and your host, Mitch. Let's have some fun. First things first, I'm gonna pour out my white dye and white mica in a random random fashion. So random, you could kinda, I don't like a lot of stripes when I'm doing countertops. A lot of the granite and natural stone I installed throughout my career had a flow to it. And customers often would have that flow go uh, with their L, right? So this would flow this way and their L, their little L leg would flow the same direction. And when you ran out of slab, you had to go purchase a whole nother slab just to make this two feet flow the same direction, that's a unique aspect with Stone Coat Epoxy, is you're gonna be able to tell the piece what way you want the flow to go. And I mixed up about three ounces per square foot for my project for these base colors. And then I have a few, I have some extra epoxy over there for uh, those accents. So keep your questions coming. If you have any Q&A, don't hesitate to ask. Chris is gonna ask me uh, as we're working. Oh, my phone turned off. I did have the show up on my cell phone there. I was gonna follow along and try to answer some as, as we had some downtime, but this is gonna be a fun show, I think. I'm not gonna take this and just start melding it out. Making any dry areas wet with resin, and then the material is gonna to continue to flow. And I'm gonna do this before I bring in my dark color because we could start making mud that way. And by mud, it's just over, over melded. It'll kind of become one color. So I'm just using my fingertips, grabbing some of that color and walking it into the dry areas. Once the epoxy has been mixed and it's down at this level, you're in no rush. Uh, I, have, I have the temperature set at 70 degrees in here, which is optimal temperatures. And this is gonna continue, this material will continue to self-level for a good three hours. The drips are gonna start slowing down in a couple. And I was just out in Hawaii doing a customer's job and I learned a ton working in that high humidity area. Uh, humidity really affects the cure of epoxy on the time frame when it goes to pull the tape on the tape dam, the epoxy will gel a little bit sooner, but then it's gonna take a little bit longer to fully cure to hardness. We also did a cement overlay right over old granite tiles. So working with the cementist product in high humidity, it's just like paint. It doesn't wanna dry. So we had some struggles to overcome with just a little wait time. But if you're, you know, it's your own house, you have that wait time. We had a plane to catch, so <laughs> got hairy there for a minute. But the project turned out great. Let me know in the project, let me know in the comments below if you watched that 
last week, I think it was like last Sunday perhaps, when we went live pouring that on site. Hey Mitch. Yo. Uh, you got a you got question? A question? Uh, uh, hang on. So what are your favorite designs to do, and is a wood grain pattern available to be done with stone coat? Totally is. So Rhonda at RK3 Design teaches a really good wood grain. Um, but yeah, you just use those spray paint colors in a striated uh, fashion. Get those, uh, get a few shades of brown, and you're just going to drag a stick through that. And you could get some really cool wood grain effects. Uh, Rust-Oleum spray paint gloss is the best uh, spray paint to use in the resin. Others are also compatible, but that one is, uh, you get the best results. So I'm a little bit lined out, if, if that makes any sense. I have kind of a stripe going, so I'm going to grab my magic trail and kind of give it some different flow. Torch this out. Ooh, check out my new tool I got from Uline, too. This thing's epic. You grab a paper towel, push it down on there, and it wets it out with isopropyl. Every epoxy creator's dream just came true. Because I hate grabbing my tools with nasty, soaked out, epoxy ridden gloves. All right. I'm gonna quickly get rid of the air. Ooh, I gotta hit my edges too, don't I? This is a good time to rub your edges out, guys. Because once those, once that epoxy flows, it's gonna wanna continue to go where it's already been wetted down. So I just come wet out this. And this is a rock face project. I created this over MDF. It's three quarters MDF. And I made a drop edge. And then I took a metal fiber sanding disc on a grinder and kind of contoured the edge to, to make it more like a, a chiseled piece of stone. Then I took some Bondo, slapped some Bondo on here to give it even more fine detail, let that dry, and then sanded it. We, t we have tutorials on the page on the YouTube channel that teach you how to do all these sorts of things. But this is, uh, this is what I do for my countertops when I'm doing a rock face edge. Hey, Mitch, we got a question about uh, 3D, uh, 3D projects. Okay. Oh, so, uh, where is it? Uh, is it, let's see, is it possible, could you use epoxy to make uh, candle vessels? Candle vessels, hmm, you could, if you put the candle vessel on a, like a tumbler turning machine, totally could put some resin on that and it will continue to slow turn as that epoxy is curing up. Uh, otherwise, the epoxy is going to want to run. So if you get that candle straight up, put some resin on there, it's all going to drip down. And if you add our thickener, it then changes the consistency of the resin to be a lot like a Venetian plaster. Uh, so. A tumbler turner is what you're gonna want to go after. I'm gonna quickly get rid of the air that I mixed in while mixing the resin up with a propane torch. You could also use a heat gun. You can even use a blow dryer, but that's like third place heat gun, propane torch. Just sweep the surface. Uh, you don't have to be in a crazy hurry. The resin is not gonna catch on fire. Stone Coat is very DIY friendly. We designed this product for the DIYer to save themselves a bunch of money and time doing their own countertops. You can see how quickly the air eliminates right on out of here. I'm gonna meld it a little bit now with my magic trowel. Reach over, so this is a flooring magic trowel. This is what they meld colors with on the floors. I've been doing a bunch of floor projects, so that is a surprise spoiler. We have some amazing floor content about to drop. Just stay tuned, guys. It's going to be epic. Here we go, bro. I'm going to just kind of meld some of this man weight. I'm going to pull some of these colors over the white and vice versa, and then I'm going to add that black. And then this project really could be installed, but then we're going to level it up 
with some of the colors of your choice. So let's show them the colors before that so they can get a get a get what they get what they want in the queue. We got some forest green, blue pearl, copper, blue earth, all from uh, Stone Coat. Then we've got Just Resin's Blue Ghost, epic color, Thornton Shimmer, makes me want to do a shimmy dance. And then we got Green Diamond. So you guys get that in the queue. Let me know what colors you want. So these magic trowels, I've also taken this to my chop saw when I didn't want to use a jumbo one and just chop saw to either side. Gave me three trowels, one with a handle and two without. They work really good. And I just go with light pressure and I pull colors over and then we're gonna open that up with the micas. You'll see them, Erica do this with those, uh, ooh, whoa, those lines might be cool in the end. She does this with those wax papers, drags it. This does kind of similar effects, but it really can soften up the project and overlay colors gonna be epic cool all right let's do a long one now ready why am I whispering I whisper when I make the videos so maybe that's why who in the comments saw the Hawaii project out there was there some folks who saw that live? Whoops. I think so. Cool. All right. That melded a little bit. Now, before I do my black, I'm going to mist it. And then I'm going to drizzle black, and then you all are going to let me know how much black to put. A lot of my most recent projects the base begins like this. I'm adding a couple micas, I'm adding a die. I get it on the project randomly, I'll mist it, and then I start building from there. But you know, this is a good, this is a effect some people don't like. So if I'm making a sample for a customer, I'll also, you know, make a sample like this, right? And then I'll mist this a little bit on one side and keep it off the other, show the customer that detail let them pick. Let them decide what they like and don't. All right. Let's let that chill. That looks pretty epic. Let me know in the comments below. Are you liking what it's looking like already? Right here, I have a little surface tension. I'm a little light on material is what that is. So I'm just going to dip my fingers in some of this white. Add that in there. Well, added a polka dot too. Here's a question about the, the white project. Sure. Uh, so did you rip uh, rip out the tile countertops in Hawaii or did you go through the process of covering over them? Very good question. And we went right over the existing tile. So it was important. The customer found us and one of her, one of the things she was looking for, she had stout, beautiful kitchen countertops. She didn't want to demo that. She was nervous about hurting her floor and she wanted to keep that out of the landfill. That was one of her selling points. So she found us, she reached out and says, uh, First off, she called Rhonda and said, don't think I'm crazy, but would you like to come to Hawaii and do countertop? And Rhonda asked me the same thing. I said, heck yeah, let's do this. We did that once before with Mike and it turned out great. And it was similar. The customer was gonna be charged a fortune to demo a thick concrete countertop. This customer was the same. It was gonna be expensive. She didn't want it in the dump. So we prepped those. It was granite tiles with grout joints. Uh, we went in, Luke showed up before us while we were flying out there. We cleaned the entire kitchen. We then uh, roughed it up with a four inch metal, uh, diamond cup wheel. You gotta abrade those glossy tiles or else nothing's gonna stick to it. That same with porcelain tiles, these were granite tiles. So this is the same prep for granite countertop. Uh, rough it up, get that dust out of there. And then it's a level quick bonding primer. That rolls on, that makes really good adhesion for the next step, which is a cementous level quick product. We taped off the dam because the, the tiles were a little out of level. Plus this gets rid of the grout joints. We poured the level quick. We're gonna have a full tutorial. So if you haven't already, subscribe. That video's dropping in probably four to six weeks. 
Anyway, we uh, level quick that. As that starts to cure, we now take a cementol, a rapid set cement product that you can pick up at the Home Depot. We use concrete bonding adhesive and created a rock face edge. And then as that product started to set up, we took sponges, we misted it, we melded the, the level quick to the rock face edge and then uh, let that dry. That's where we made an error in time frame, right? We didn't realize how long it would take that cement product to fully dry. The, de the de instructions said 16 hours, but it was like 26 hours and it was still wet. So we pumped on some dehumidifiers and that did the trick. We came back the next day, we seal coated that uh, concrete overlay at this point. Now, now we're going over concrete and epoxy bonds tenaciously to concrete. So we did a two ounce coat because our edges were three inches long. That's a huge, thick edge. It looks like a jumbo slab, which the end result was epic, but we coated those edges. We were nervous about the exotic pour going over a cementous three inch, three inch edge. So the seal coat helped with that. We did our tape dam, we did the exotic pour. Then the next day, we literally, we had a dinner reservation at 6.30 on the final night, and we were finishing ultimate top coat at 5.45. We got out of there, barely got dressed and ready to go. It was an epic project. And look as I was rambling what happened to this piece. Look how pretty that is. So at first those cells are almost overwhelming, but they settle down. It looks epic. It's time to add some black. Enough yapping, Mitch. I need to learn how to, um, I need to learn how to talk and work at the same time. So what do you think, bro? Just do some blobs and meld a little? Let's do it. That's what I'm doing. this black's gonna go a long way. I'm gonna put some through this silver now, kind of right here, and leave it like that. You like that sound effect, bro? I, I normally edit out those silly sound effects, but you guys have a special treat today. This black, I mixed up too much. I'm gonna meld with my hands. And I'm gonna kind of walk it out too at the same time. So I pick it up and walk it into the silver. And then we're gonna come, maybe I'll, I'll do, let me know in the comments below, do you want me to take a vein of the black and then meld it with the magic trowel? That's the first question of the day. This is Dora the Explorer, you choose your adventure, except I'm not Dora, I'm a gigantic Bigfoot looking dude from, from Oregon. So sorry, and I don't know very much Spanish. Can you go over the colors you used again? Yes, right here we have simply white mica, black mica, and white dye. All from stone coat mixed into art coat. So I'm kind of showing you one of our most popular selling kits. Uh, hint, hint, there may be an upcoming sale. I don't know though. Possibly, oh my God, oh, okay, I can't see that. Possibly even with our best selling kits. Hmm, I don't know. A little birdie said something. Yeah. Now I'm gonna pick up a little bit and just kind of walk it around randomly so I get some of that color where it's not too strong either. And you just swoop up, walk it in. Tiny bit on my fingers. You can see how dark it can make it, right? That was just one little ribbon. If I were to pour a bunch out, your light countertop, quick, your white marble will quickly become black marble. But I think we need a little more color. Do they want to see the magic trowel with the black or they want to get to accent colors? I've seen more black. Cool. More black it is. Okay, now I'm going to use this. We'll see what this does with it.
Dude, that's pretty right there. I like that. I bet that would lay out so pretty when you missed it. Let's do that again. What do you think, Nate? You get the first vote. I like it as is. You like it as is? Well, I don't, I regret giving you the first vote. <laughs> Who's on spring break? Man, my kids just went on spring break today. They don't have school on Fridays. So I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be fun. All right, misting. That is going to be epic. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to add more black too up in that corner. Dang, that's sick. See what that magic trail does, dude. I love that. Tommy likey. Tommy want wingy. Oh, I love it. All right. I'm going to go right here. And then pull it at goodness. See, it's like when you first pull it with that, you're like, eh, eh, muscle manos. <laughs> but then you hit it with that alcohol. I love that. All right, let's go again. Do you drag veins? I can drag veins. That could be an option down the road, yes. Like spray paint veins, huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got some black in my white. Yeah, we could do that down the road after I add some accents. That's a good request. All right, let's get moving. So to do that too, folks, I'm going in the black, slightly dragging and pulling up at the same time. Because it's going to add different textures. That's going to be epic. You got to watch out for drips. As you saw, I took it off and then I walked it around my project. Otherwise, you'll, it'll rain drips on you. And that sometimes isn't the best look like I just flung. I'm going to walk this one this way now. Okay. All right, let's get some colors. Guys, let me know what colors you want me to mix up too. I got four cups of epoxy mixed up. Uh, let's vote on the first one. Let's pick a, I got a couple shades of blue and a couple shades of green. Let's pick one shade of blue right now. I guess blue pearl would count too. Boom. Blue pearl, blue earth, or ghost blue. Let me know in the comments below. You have T minus 45 seconds to vote and then Dora is grabbing whatever is most voted for. Chris, you're keeping tally. Okay. And Nate, let's get that right there for the audience. We're gonna miss this while we're voting. So give them a quick flyover and stay nice and close, I'll miss. Cool? Okay. Whew. Blue Earth, I mean, excuse me, Ghost Blue. I don't wanna lead the witness, but glow, Ghost Blue is almost a grayish blue. I think it would look really good. This piece is looking freaking good. Fire. That's what I wanted to say. And I'll come occasionally, rub out those edges. You'll have little areas that got maybe a little more resin. I should have fogged these edges too. I talked about that, then I forgot to. So when you're going like lighter colors over dark, I would have come and fogged my edges. See where it's all white. I would have come in here with some whites and grays and silvers. Gave it a little visual interest for that look. That look not so much, right? So if I had some silvers and white to break that up, it would look, it would be more visually interesting. So that's one thing I didn't do. I should have fogged that. I totally meant to. And then time slipped away from me. But these are still going to look good. Go ahead, Chris. Which of the blues there? Yeah, you got to, oh, so we got Ghost Blue from ATD. It's from uh, Just Resin. Or we got bl Blue Earth or Blue Pearl. Ooh, Blue Pearl would look good too. So, we got any winners yet? Seems like Blue Earth 
might be winning over Blue Pearl as most requested. Okay. I see some copper. Okay, that's coming up next. We're sticking with blues right now. I'm gonna go mix some blue earth because that's one of my favorite colors anyway. So we're gonna do the same thing. We'll just hand meld. We'll, uh, we'll use that magic trowel. Oh, I should have cleaned up. And then now is a real good time for Q and A because I'm gonna be mixing for a second. And I'm making a mess. Just a tablespoon or so uh, into, I, that's too much, but. Uh, so let me talk about one of the things while I'm mixing too that's dropping. I already mentioned it before, which was the floor epoxy. And if you look down here, we have a whole new addition coming to Stone Coat Epoxy, which is the flake floor system. We've took industrial, our, our industrial grade, you know, contractor grade, real fast setting, extremely durable, high performance flooring epoxy. And we dumbed it down for the DIYer, not dumbed it down without sacrificing any durability. So you have longer times to work with it. It doesn't stink like uh, some, you know, if you pay for an epoxy contractor to come do it, it doesn't stink out your whole house. We have a brand new polyaspartic top coat that will never ever yellow. It's insanely durable. We have a new um, non-slip grip additive. So the extra slippy areas, throw that clear grit in there and you now have a great grip. Um, what else? We have a brand new redesigned and formulated, it's become industry standard to put a moisture barrier down on concrete, which is your first layer and line of defense against you know moisture pressure piling up and making your epoxy delam. If you didn't have a, a vapor barrier under your slab, in the past you no longer could use the floor in epoxy. Now with a vapor moisture sealer, you totally can. Most floors are gonna be able to, and we have been filming and editing like crazy. We have a brand new series coming out on our new flooring system, expected early to mid April. So subscribe right now, share this video. We have some crazy cool stuff coming your way that's gonna help the DIYer fix that forgotten nasty garage space. God, wait till you see the garage I did. It was destroyed and it looks epic. I did the flake system. It is so easy. Anybody can do this. Uh, let's go, let's add some blue earth. Enough talking again. What's the cost per square foot? Ooh, that's a good question. So here's the, co the cost, roughly. So it's still, it's still being determined, but a, a garage I did, it's a garage and a half. So I forget the exact square footage. It would cost a pro, I got a quote on it. It would cost me $5,400 to have a pro do a flake system. Same exact thing I did. It cost me from Stone Coat 700 bucks. So, and we have the tutorials to teach you how to do it. Just like you're used to with Stone Coat, we're gonna show you every step of the way. We're not gonna send you the tutorial after you purchase. We're gonna teach you first. We're gonna give you the confidence to know that you're gonna be able to do this right the first time, and then you're gonna dominate your garage. And then share pictures with us. All right, here comes some Blue Earth. Enough yapping, man. And I'm gonna kinda go right over this black. Now I'm gonna start having fun layering. This is gonna be epic. Does the flooring system work outside? It does. With the polyaspartic flake system, totally. That polyaspartic will never amber. It's insanely durable. Okay, another spoiler alert. You could do this right over existing concrete if you have a nasty terrible slab outside that's out of level i'm going to teach you how to go right over an existing slab with this pebble stone we're gonna we're gonna you could use multiple colors you could do pool decks the sky is the limit ah oh, i don't like that saying ask luke 
All right, here we go. Hand mills or trowel? Let me know. Quick. 10, 9, 8. I'm doing the trowel right here on this piece. Couldn't wait. I'm not a very good door explorer. Ooh, okay. That's going to be legendary. How it skipped like that. Same direction, huh? Every once in a while, I'll kind of scrape it off too. So I don't have any drips going everywhere. I gotta get moving too. That epoxy's been in the cups for a minute. Guys, pick the next color while I'm farting around with this. Mm, let me just use this now. Yeah, we're seeing more for a hand. Cool. Cool, cool. I, I was a Nostradamus right there. So again, I, my technique when I ever hand meld is I kind of want to just feather it out into the other colors around me. The more you meld though, the more color it's going to make. But as you skip and pop around with that color and then again hit it with the alcohol, it's going to be epic. And then we could hit it with a stick chop like Rhonda does. That breaks some pretty cool lines in. I think this is just the right amount of blue too. You don't want to get it overwhelming. Some blue stones have been the most expensive slabs Mike and I have installed as installers when it comes to natural stone. The price shoots through the roof when you have blue. I like this because we're going to be able to compare the mist when it comes to the hand meld versus that trowel. So guys, you can also use the Bondo spreader. If you don't have these, you got to get these on Amazon. So that's where I picked these up. They're not at Home Depot. So I will, if you, um, you could, you also suffice using a Bondo spreader. So same idea, just kind of glide that across. All right, I'm going to miss this again. The misting, what I like about that is it takes away the man-made drags and little swirls when you fracture that open and so can heat. Heat also helps it move and, and flow a little bit more as you warm it up, especially as the epoxy has been sitting and I've been yapping, it will thicken up. The heat re-solidifies it, makes it more fluid. Re-solidifies, re-liquefies. So far, we probably already have, you know, two finished countertops, easy. We could have stopped and pumped the brakes, let it cure, and it would have been a fantastic countertop for a kitchen. That's what I always try to show here on this channel is really countertops. How can you DIY and save some money in your kitchen in a practical application? So you can also mist this into your hand, make puddles and the old ATD Italian drip will give you some bigger cells. Holy cow. I'm digging it. Could you set this up for a farm sink rather than a top down? Totally can. Definitely. So farm sink, if, if for, for those of you who don't, first while I yap and mix, I need to mix a new color. Real quick. Green. Which green? Forest green. Green diamond from Just Resin. Forest green from Stone Coat. Or well, that's kind of a bluish green. I see a forest green and yeah, some boats for copper as well. Okay, let's go to let's go to copper. You said that earlier. So I think some people want to see some copper in here. And I think the copper with that blue earth is a beautiful call. Yes. That stuff. Okay, so okay, remind me of the question again. Oh, uh, farm sink and farm sink. Cool. Yeah, so the difference between a farm sink, for those of you who don't know, is 
the farm sink uh, is the front of your countertop. So with a top mount or an undermount sink, you usually have some edge and countertop in front of the sink. With a farm sink, you walk up to it and this whole section will be cut out. So it's now like an undermount, but they also have top mount farm sinks where the front of your cabinet and countertop is your actual sink. They're really cool sinks. They're pretty difficult to, to install if you're not very good at woodworking because you usually have to modify an existing cabinet to take a farm sink. And if you are a contractor and you're going into, ooh, this epoxy is warming up. I'm yapping too much. When, um, and that's warming up guys because I left it in a cup. This stuff is fine. This is gonna be fluid for the next hour. If you leave an epoxy in a mass and you're talking to your live way too long, it can thicken up and prematurely cure. It's an exothermic reaction. Look at the big brain on Mitch. That means it's creating heat. When epoxy gets mixed, you're on the clock. The bigger the mass, the shorter the clock. Out, man, this piece looks good. Out at an eighth inch, hours. All right, copper. I'm keeping the same flow. I'm absolutely loving this. This has been a fun piece. Here we go. Let me come in through here with it. Not too much though, huh? Where else? Right through the front? Yep. In front of that black? And I stepped on resin. All right, I'm gonna hand meld this and I'll use the Bondo spreader for that. So I think I've left them, oh, look how dark that is. That's adding a lot of color though. That is loud. So I should have done a thinner vein of copper, but I'm gonna show you how to fix it. Take sublimation like uh, logos, Ooh. finals. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for the definition, Chris. Because without you, buddy, mm, I would have never known what that word meant. Uh, and then I would have felt really silly. I've never heard sublimate either. So, yeah, you can. If you wanted to put a logo on this, which many restaurants have, like, they'll do their tables like that. Uh, you let this cure, let this color coat cure. I'm gonna add some more white to this because I don't like it, it's too, too loud. Um, you let this one cure, and then you'll come back with your vinyl, lightly sand the entire surface, and then put your vinyl down, and then do a clear coat. Then it protects it forever and ever, amen. Forever and ever, amen. I'm singing now, not good. So the, uh, the mica flake flooring, would that uh, work in the basement? Yes, it sure would. Yep, so I ha I'll teach you how to do a moisture test. If you come back the next day, you're gonna put plastic down, you come back the next day, and the moisture is, your concrete has darkened, there's moisture under that plastic, there's a scientific way to do it, which is called a sodium chloride test. You put that down, but I would say I, with, with our formulation, you're at about 95 to eight, you know, I'd say 90 to 95% of all floors are gonna be compatible with it. It penetrates, that first coat penetrates so much, it, um, it doesn't let go. You could even have water under the slab building up some pressure and it will, it'll hold tight. It's epic. Okay, I'm gonna mist again because that'll, that'll break up some of this. And I, I, I rebounded, you see how I just, it was almost too much copper. It's like, ooh, too much. So I brought in some other colors, just a little bit of my white metallic and a little bit of my white dye 
and I'll do this on projects. When I'm doing this, I, I, as I'm leveling it up, you walk over the line too much, don't panic. You still have time to get this the way you want it. Just missed a little bit. I'm gonna miss the lot right here. And as the resin sets up, these uh, the selling is gonna do less and less. And I don't know if adding another color is gonna help this piece. This is epic. Guys, I got two more cups. What about that forest green? Ooh. I don't know about that green in here now. I don't know about that. If anything, I would do maybe that. What about that? Hmm. Mm, I don't know. This is where I struggle. And that's where uh, ATD... Rhonda, folks like that, if you haven't subscribed to those, Clara Lawrence Art, all of them are very good at color theory. And that's a, that's a difficult part of this project. So that's kind of what we do here is we play with colors, show examples of how they're gonna look on our dime. This is our epoxy. You don't, you don't have to pay to see this. You don't have to mix all this up. I'm kind of just going nice and slow, showing you what I do behind the scenes. I like these lives. Let me know some Q&A too, guys, while we're doing this. We're kind of running out of time on the resin. I got two more colors. Do they want to see one of those greens or do you want me to pump the brakes? Uh, I'm seeing backpedaling on the green. Um, I'm seeing pearl. The blue pearl would probably add to this without getting too wild. Also, so, I'm seeing to put more black on top. Okay, I could do that. Fracture with a trowel. Oh, use the, the Bondo spreader? Maybe some black over this. Nate, pass me that Bondo spreader. Your hand was on video? Nice. <laughs> Guys, also, check this out. You've asked, we've delivered. Undercoat, one gallon jugs. Check out that new branding. It's epic. We redesigned the ultimate top coat for floors. It's open longer. Epic product. I cannot wait to release this to you. We're changing the game in the epoxy world. And that little counter, check that out. The good folks at Hack Make Mod hooked me up with that counter. It shows how many views and these ain't all mine. My bro Mike started this train of stone coat and has 90% of those. Uh, check them out, hackmakemod.com. They got some pretty cool stuff, great customer service, really down to earth dudes, go support them. If you have a YouTube channel and you want to do subtle flexing on how many su uh, subs you got, they're the guys to find. So this is our Bondo spreader. It's going to do the kind of the same thing, but more of a, I'm just skipping it. Skip trailing it around just so you, you get rid of that line. Here's a question. Can you put this on top of Corian with the six all one piece? You sure can. So that is a tricky part because the resin wants to self level um, and specific color recipes are better suited for that or you need to time your veins right. If I was gonna do a um, piece like this, a lot of those colors when they hit the bowl are gonna run and it's not gonna look like this normal surface. So you're gonna, so if you like put all your color direct decorations on first and apply clear, then no colors are running. The marble spray, then clear, boom. The stone spray, then clear, easy peasy. Uh, you could roll on multiple colors like the sponge painting. I, I, I forget the title on the, on the channel, but there's a couple where I use a sponge roller and it turns out really good. Uh, really easy to do. And then you're just applying clear epoxy, no colors run and you're good to go. I'm going to add a little more blue to this. This is getting a little busy. Maybe adding blue would make it more busy though. And I'm going to mist. And then let me get some blue pearl on that bad boy and we're gonna call this piece done. It's so pretty. I love it. Let me get some blue pearl mixed up. 
first off. Oh, I love that. All right. Will an epoxy kitchen floor end up being slippery? No, if you have the grit in there, the, tire, the, the epoxy is about as slippy as granite. Excuse me. The epoxy is about as slippy as tile is when it's wet. But what tile has that epoxy doesn't is grout joints to break it up. If you start to, whoa, whoa. So we, add, we have that grit. It's a clear grit that goes in there and it will, it's, depending on how many scoops you put in, you put one, two, or three ounces in, it's light, medium, or heavy grit. So it will really, it really helps in a wet environment, right outside the bathtubs, all that good stuff, or in a kitchen. Uh, let's go. We're doing blue earth. I mean, excuse me, blue pearl. I hope this epoxy is not set up though. We got a little bit more time, not much. So these blue pearls are uh, the pearl colors we have. Geez, almighty, are a great way to add a little subtle color without getting overwhelming because it's gonna catch the light specifically. And we have like red, we have red pearl, we have yellow pearl, violet pearl, blue pearl, green pearl even. And they can add some cool, like I did a piece with white dye, black metallic, and then I took white and black dye and created a gray. And then I threw some of this on. Ooh, show them, it's right there. It's that little shower panel. Look at that one. That blue you're seeing is the blue pearl. How pretty is that? I love it. That's on a shower panel too. So if you don't know, you know now, you could take stone coat, you could get pink foam from the Home Depot and turn it into waterproof wall panels. It's amazing. Here we go. We're running out of time. This is getting warm. I'm just gonna go wild now, right over the silver. Okay. Question, What's up? Uh, how long have you been doing this for and how did you get into it? Wow, great question. So it's a cool story and I'll tell it as I play with this. My brother and I were granite installers and we saw how much folks were paying for granite. And granite is a young man's game. So Mike was ready to get out. Mike's four years older than I am. And it is beat you up. It's heavy. It's not fun. And we wanted cu our customers to have a, a, a better option than just going to the getting laminate, right? Everybody has the same laminate. So we kind of went in the route of concrete overlays. And the, the overlay, um, the overlay sealer is what it's all about, right? You're doing all this work to stamp the concrete and then you're putting a sealer on that just wears right off. So that that's what led to epoxy. That's gonna last longer. And then it was like, we're doing all this work for this overlay. Why not just make the epoxy look awesome? But there really wasn't one out there that would do that. Found one, Mike starts playing with colors while I continued being the granite guy. So Mike really spearheaded this whole thing. Uh, he, kept, he kept throwing out formulas. He finally found a chemist that would work with him without buying 250 gallons minimum. So he, he worked on the formulation. He had to get it where it's still gonna flex enough over an overhang, but not leave a heavy ring in, right? Or if it was too stiff and it flexed and it would crack. So these were all things he had to overcome and he, he and a chemist nailed it. They got the, we, the best epoxy for countertops in the industry in my opinion. So leading up to me, I was still building, you know, uh, like, I'd build big shops with living quarters above them. I was a contractor here in Oregon. After the granite, I had to replace an entire hip because of granite. So I got out of that game. I started building homes, and I'm watching Mike after he released this product, and I'd call him every ride home. How much did you sell today, bro? And he would tell me, like, you know, 700 bucks. And we'd celebrate because to make 700 bucks in the granite world, we had to lift a giant island, right? And it, we're busting our back and driving across Southern Oregon. So it quickly snowballed, thanks to you guys in the videos he started sharing, where he was giving away the knowledge and hoping y'all would 
you know, gain some confidence and try out the products. And it was an unlock. So he says, Mitch, I need you. And I joined forces with customer service on day one. I was probably his second employee behind my dad, uh, RIP. And I helped start with his wife and Mike, the customer service uh, div division. And, and then that slowly morphed into me helping on the creation side. And then uh, Polytech got involved and Mike knew he put so much of his time and effort into this. He was missing his kid's life and time with his family because this is an insane amount of work. So uh, we knew years ago that eventually I'd be taking over and he would retire. And that day came and he's doing great. He's got some cool business businesses about to launch, uh, so I'm told. So if you haven't, go subscribe to my bro, Mike Quist on YouTube. He's got some cool stuff coming and tell him I sent you. But so here we are. So now I've been doing this full time, making videos for Stone Coat for about a year and a half now. Uh, without, well, about a year without Mike. He retired last April. So he's doing good. I miss him. But this piece is epic. Thanks for that question. That took me down like nostalgic uh, road trip. What do we do, guys? I got all this epoxy left. I hate I've wasting seen, it. I've seen lots of requests for uh, uh, a dirty pour vein with transparency in it, which I agree with. Oh boy, with the blue, tra with the this. With like the leftover and some of the transparent. Copy that. Let's do it. Why not, right? Party's coming to an end here on a Friday night. Let me know what y'all doing this weekend. You got some cool plans? Here comes that. This stuff's getting warm. Good. Uh, let me come up front. I'll make a big dirty pour and then I'll pour it in those uh, little uh, coasters. Jeez, I couldn't talk. Let me bring it up front so they could see. All right. We're running out of time though because this is getting warm. So starting, I think we're coming towards the end. So I'm going to just let it out. Starting Monday, folks, we have a epic sale going on. It's a short sale, but it's of our epoxy, our top coat, our art coat, uh, every, pretty much our most highest selling products. What you saw here, it's on sale. So those first items, that's all in a kit. We're going to drop the landing page on our social media. So go follow on Facebook, Instagram, subscribe right now. We're dropping the coupon code Monday morning. It's a short sale, but it's 20% off our best selling products. Now quit yapping. Let's go. Let's build this. You going to go through that white area? I think so. We'll see. I'm going to do some blue pearl, blue earth, a wee bit of copper. I'm out of white mica, aren't I? Maybe some clear. That'll keep it translucent. Ooh, sheesh. This white is thick. So dirty pores, guys, these are perfect for beginners. You can't ever replicate the piece ever again, so don't promise anyone. But if you stick with the same color ratios, it can turn out awesome. I think this is gonna be too much color but I'm here to test it for you. Let me go into that clear. Look at that. Okay. No black. Okay, black. I heard him scream, bro. I felt it big time. All right, let's roll. Right through here. What you think? Let's go. Full send. I haven't thought of it before, but what about putting this on a cabinet door? Yeah, that's gonna be done. You gotta you gotta pour the pour take all the cabinets off. I've seen it done. Man, this is gonna be slippy. Here we go. That's wild. And I just dumped all over my floor. All right, that's gonna self-level because I just did a giant mass right there. 
Let me just pour the pour, post that up. Film that for a minute. I'm gonna pour the rest of this in here to my chingadeuses. Does anyone know what a chingadeus is? My dad used that word all the time. Like he'd say, grab that, grab the chingadeus. I mean, and I would know what he meant, but I don't know. It's weird. All right, I'm gonna go put these in these. So guys, get you some little silicone coasters whenever you over mix. And then you could save. Turn your resin into treasures. Who's seen my cool new hat? Who wants one? Let me know the first video you saw me on for a chance to win. I'm gonna pick out a winner and I'll send you one of these hats. Dang, those are cool. on there too. <laughs> yep. Whatever that copper dookie. This is looking cool. Chat is loving the hat. Cool. Thanks guys. You could thank Dana for that. She works with us. She totally redesigned the vibe. She had a meeting with me. She goes, you don't match the brand. And then busted that out all on her own. I love it. I might have overfilled this. So this is a little holder. And I did overfill it, but it's a really terrible design. Those things should be prouder. So when that comes out, I sand it off. And then those, then all these coasters sit right in this little stand. Those look cool. This was a fun live. I will say so myself. Quickly, let me know some Q and A while I torch this bad boy out. We're running out of time. What time is it? How long we've we been rolling? Let's see, about an hour. Cool. Where'd you get those coasters? I got that coaster mold where you get everything nowadays on Amazon. They're pretty cool. They have all sorts of cool stuff on Amazon for silicone. I saw this one guy, he has a silicone tray for epoxy. These are all silicone molds, they pull right out. You, there's various items, earrings, all sorts of things you can get. Anyway, this guy has a big tray that you pour out all your excess like this. And then when it's all full, it's like 20 or 30 different epoxy tools that are all in this silicone mat. Brilliant idea. Uh, like little stir sticks. You had like these tweezers that it made to pull bugs and stuff out. There was all different little spreaders. Brilliant idea. I don't recall the actual dude, so I can't send you to his page. But if you search silicone mat epoxy tools, I bet you'll find it. All right, guys, this thing is done. I had a blast making it with you. Remember this, sale starts Monday, 20% off. All our best selling items and whoever comments the first video you watched me on, enter to win, I'm gonna send you a hat. But you gotta check back. So oftentimes I'll put like prizes out and I'll say leave a comment and then I'll pick somebody and then you never come back to the comment so I never know who to send it to and I gotta keep picking winners so if you enter, check back, because I'll pick a winner like on Monday. Check back on Monday, and you'll see a message from Stonecoat that says, send me your address, and I will send you a cool new hat. Uh, let me know, quick, any questions before I got to go. Uh, questions with install. I've installed this stuff all over for tons of customers. I've just got done with a bunch of floors for a restaurant. That's going to be epic. This looks cool. What do you think, Nate? Love it. Nice. What do you think of my new alcohol dispenser? Easy to use. 
Is there molding for a brick background? There sure is. So Mike has created that before. So Alumalite, one of our sister companies, sells a product called Plat, uh, Plat 40 silicone. It's a it's a one to one product that you mix together, then it cures, and then you peel it right off. So what we did is we made a little form out of whatever, like it was a it was a granite like stacked stone backsplash. You could see that on a couple videos. We made a mold of it, then you peel the mold off, and then we used rapid set cement right in the mold and made our own backsplashes that we then epoxied over. It was, or we painted them, faux painted them with spray paints, and then rolled on the ultimate top coat right over them and then installed them like tiles. It was labor intensive, but the cost uh, doing it that way was way less than buying a whole pallet of stack stone. It's epic. I'm gonna miss this one more time. And then we're calling it a night. You tired of holding that thing, bro? You've been holding it a whole hour. Guys, crush the like button for my cameraman, Nate. Dude's the goat. That blue pearl's cool. So, hey, Ketchup, yeah. The UTC, uh, do you have to sand before you yes. use it necessary? Yes, it is necessary. So unlike epoxy, guys, epoxy has an open period where no sanding is necessary, right? You'll come back and it'll, ooh, man, that's looking good. You'll come back between 16 and 22 hours, and it's still subtly, not sticky, but you could put your hand there and it will be subtly sticky, right? It's open still. You won't need to sand before putting a clear coat on. It's not that way with, with our top coat. The ultimate top coat is a water, it's a modified water-based urethane. So it needs a mechanical bond and that is very light. I mean, when, when this cures, if I would come back tomorrow uh, in 20 to 24 hours, I will grab a hand sander with 220 and just slightly take away that perfect shine. So it's got little spider scratches on there. It's real fresh. I'll do the same thing on the edges, but on the edges, I'll use a scotch bright pad, the maroon or green ones. Lightly open that up, clean the dust, ready for the ultimate top coat. Uh, do not think if you come back in, in 18 to 24 hours and you think you're opening the window and just apply it on, it will bond, but you're risking failure down the road. So definitely do a light scuffing. Great question though. And if you don't sand, you come back, it fails. You lightly sand the whole project, flat, smooth, and reapply. I'm gonna get rid of this air while we're getting any questions, but I think we're about to wrap it. It's been an hour, guys. I mixed this 15 minutes before the show, so. It's an hour and 15 minutes old and I'm still able to manipulate it. I'm still able to move, remove the air out of it. That is cool. So if I was if I was in Hawaii, this would be too late already to start farting with it. With it was 95% humidity and probably 80 degrees. So that was extreme. If you're in Hawaii, if you're in Florida, you're on the East Coast in the summer when the humidity is above 75%, your epoxy will act differently. It's gonna gel up quicker. So when I say peel your tape dam, you know, two to three hours after mixing. It's one hour in Hawaii and Florida. It's gelled up enough, it's still gonna flow, but not too gelled where your edges will be exposed. So about one hour after mixing, you're gonna peel tape dams. When do you put tape dams on a project? Some epoxy guys out there, other companies, use a two to one on their countertop formula. That's a thinner product, it's a floor epoxy. And they're using rollers and they tape off every coat. Do not tape your edges when using stone coat epoxy for your normal clear coats. If you're doing a coat that requires three ounces per square foot, which is your chopped marble, it's what I did today, minus that exotic pour. The exotic pour or melded marble techniques 
is when you're gonna use five to seven ounces per square foot. That gets you a real tight, tight uh, exotic pour, dirty pours. Uh, that's when I tape and make a tape dam. Whenever I'm going over three ounces per square foot, if you're pouring three ounces, no tape dam necessary. So that is a common, I've been seeing that issue in customer service. So some, some guys show that. So just with stone coat, no need to tape off your clear coat or a chopped marble or a soapstone. Do tape off dirty pours and melded marbles, if that makes sense. I answered a question that wasn't even asked. Speaking of questions, uh, let's see. Does the back splash need to be removed to finish uh, or uh, a, a new one put in? Yep. I know what you're saying, but uh, so if you're going to pour over existing, you want to do something like this, you go to put it on your vertical backsplash, it's going to run down and not look normal. So as an installer or a homeowner, what I would do is cut off the backsplash on your laminate. You could do that with a sawzall. You could rent a jam saw at your rental yard for like 20 bucks and that just cuts it perfectly flush to the countertop. It'll, it'll take you three minutes to do it. You remove that, you'll have a little gap back there. You feel that, and we have videos that show you step by step on the, on the channel. There's a couple white kitchens that I do this in. Um, you put Baccarat in there, you Bondo over that. I'm gonna come torch those things. Then you, um, you're, you're as normal, and then you're gonna cut your backsplash and lay it flat and pour it like this when you go to pour the countertops. So it matches, and then you install it with silicone vertically. Those are probably some of my favorite coasters I ever made, by the way. Those are epic. If you comment right now, okay, I'm giving away two things. You comment how long the first video you saw me, you may win a hat. If you want to win those coasters, share the video and comment below that you shared it. That really helps the channel grow. Guys, we try to show you how to work with epoxy, how to get some confidence, and to help us grow, share that video. That helps us tremendously. Uh, we appreciate you being here. It's late on a Friday. I love doing this. I love doing the lives. Chris, thanks for being here, pal. Nate, you did great, bro. I bet you're tired of holding that thing. He's been holding it for a minute. I'm telling you, you need to have that monopod where you could just set it up, bro. That will help you. But guys, thanks for being here. We got any more questions or should I wrap it up, Chris? Uh, you can come over here and look at the questions. Okay, that's a good idea. Well, uh, we get flyover. Yep, cool. Okay, we got a bunch. Which epoxy over plywood floor? So our flooring epoxy will be able to go over plywood floor. I filmed that. You're gonna address the cracks with our uh, floor crack patch. You put that down, sand it. Then we have our undercoat. That goes down and now your floor is a giant countertop. You could just go as normal. Tutorial coming soon. Next question, where do I find the foam boards? You could get that pink insulation foam in the insulation section at the Home Depot or Lowe's. Some, you'll see a foil backed one. Usually it's white. It's a softer foam. Avoid that. You want the real dense foam that's designed to go in between studs or like in a garage door. Uh, in Home Depot, it's going to have the pink panther on it. I want to keep the high gloss, so should I not use the top coat? So we have a glossy version of the Ultimate Top Coat, but it's subtly different. I would say it's satin or semi-gloss. Uh, it's not that high gloss that you get out of a clear coat of epoxy. So if that's what you're looking for, at this stage, I'd come back the next day and I lightly scuff. Or if I'm at, mm, 50, if I'm at 16 to 20 hours, I could pour a clear coat right over that without sanding. Three ounces per square foot. What is the best tape to use the 3M Blue? So I use blue tape, uh, which is an easy release tape whenever I'm going over the cabinets. That's a good way to keep uh, the cabinet lacquer good or whenever I'm taping a wall. Uh, then if you want the extra sticky tape, ooh, our thing went up to 3.8. Cool, it was at 3.7. Our little counter went up and I noticed, sorry for the distraction, I'm like a squirrel. 
<laughs> can you apply epoxy over plexiglass for the see-through effect? You sure can. You scuff that up uh, with 220 as well. Uh, plexiglass and epoxy will bond very well, but you want to watch out for the ultra flex. Uh, you can create a D lamb with that, so if it's supported well, it will bond really well. Where is the first place you did a project, and were you nervous? Okay, cool. That's a great question. The first project I did, my it was like day two of customer service. I go, Mike, I need some of this material, so I could, uh, so I know better to help. You know, if I have my own stories to tell, he's like, okay, perfect. Here you go. Mix it up. Here's some colors, and I made a 49ers table, and I missed the memo on three ounces per square foot. And I mixed up so much and just kept pouring it over the piece. <laughs> it was all running off. And it went all through my plastic onto my floor in my house. It was an epic newbie adventure. I wish I filmed it. I might have had that actually on, a, on Google Photos one day. I need to bust that out. How do you, have you done an epoxy project for a backlit, backlit onyx effect or wall or counter? Mm, this is a project in progress. So I cannot divulge too much. You will see a tutorial very shortly. I'm making an island for Kinney with RK3 Designs. He and I are collabing on an epic Onyx island that when you flip the switch, the entire thing lights up. I've done that with real stone. It cost the homeowners a fortune. I've been wanting to replicate it and I found the right LED panels. It's legendary. You can cut these panels like even if it's a curve. Oh golly, it's epic. And you don't see the dot. So it's just a perfect glow. Where are we at, Chris? Uh, at the top? Yeah. Have you ever tried to create a slate looker design? Yeah, slate's kind of black. So I would take black dye, black mica, maybe a very dark silver mica and kind of just hand meld those or use that trowel to meld them over one another, kind of take the man-made look. Because slate's almost, I bet you that magic trowel would make a pretty good slate. Bro, that's a good call, dog. I'm going to make a slate countertop moving up. Maybe on next week's live. See it. Subscribe if you ask that question. Thank you. When does a new flooring video hit YouTube? Boo, I just watched the video today and I'm going to voice over it. Uh, the products are released. We're shooting for the second week of April. Um, they're creating them. You know, uh, we're getting our stock levels up. So when we release all our videos, we have products to sell. So I would say mid to late April, all those videos are dropping. Any advice on doing a bar stool? Ooh, that's cool. Like if the if the bar stool is flat and you don't like have some bar stools have the the butt impressions in them. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like sanded down so it fits your butt better. The epoxy is gonna settle into those little valleys. <laughs> How should I have? Oh my god. Okay, so if it has little valleys, it's gonna pull. So if it's just a flat bar stool, tape the legs off. Um, go to Pour it as usual, mind your drips, you know, uh, and you're good to go. I have, ooh, can I do this for my fireplace mantles? Totally. We have a video on the channel that shows Mike doing his fireplace mantle for the, for the house my, uh, he built for my mom. So that totally works. You don't, it's very heat resistant, but you want to mind the burning chunks of wood. You don't want to let those sit on there. It's, I've cooked an egg on a cured epoxy countertop with ultimate top coat on there. I took a cast iron pot, I heated it up to insanely hot. I put it on the counter, I dropped some butter in there, I cooked an egg and it, it totally survived. I wouldn't recommend doing it, but it totally will. Again, like if you get some flaming logs on the epoxy, just get them up as quick as possible, but no need to panic. It's not gonna uh, combust into flames. I have three old shape Odd or old shaped living room, probably odd. Odd shaped, odd shaped living room tables all have a quarter inch lip around the edge. Would want to pour simultaneously so they look like one slab. Any suggestions? So whenever we do that, we just kind of get them as close as possible. If you're going to do an exotic pour, I would tape up each table or a dirty pour, same thing. Uh, I would tape up each table, create a tape dam, and then scoot each table as close as you can to one another. You know, maybe a quarter to half inch apart with a tape dam. Mix up your dirty pour, pour it out a lot across all three pieces. Get them all filled with resin with the same bucket. 
let them sit, then peel that tape dam. Here in Oregon, it's between hours two and three. In Hawaii, it's at hour one. Texas, it's between hour one and two. So, and you'll know when you're, you, I'll dip my finger in the front edge and pick up. When the epoxy stays a little stringy on my finger, that's when I know I'm ready. So that's how I do it. Then I peel the tape all at the same time. And then those are all gonna look like they were cut out of the same exact slab of granite. Man, I'm on fire. Yeah. Hey Mitch, what would you do for a cabinet door like one that has a design that dips in the middle? So yeah, that'll, that'll be tough. At that rate, you could, uh, I would, you could use your color effects knowing they're gonna kind of run and go that route. Or you can do a, like a black galaxy. You could pre-paint them and then coat it with resin. So like you could faux finish them. Rhonda does that real pretty faux finishing and then cover stuff with epoxy so it's insanely durable. So with the valleys and things and the, and the intricate like beads and details around cabinet doors, that could get difficult on your epoxy design where it'll pull, settle, catch your eye as, uh, mm, what's going on there? So just keep that in mind. Do, do a small door and see if you like it. From there, you may love it and then just full send it. How should I have my steak cooked? Sorry, I had to throw that in there. Uh, if you do not have your steak cooked medium rare, you're probably a red-blooded communist. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I take that back, YouTube. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so I'll tell you a story. When I, we're out in Texas for the hands-on training, and if you haven't, if you like what you see, but you're a little leery and you say, Mitch, your teaching is epic, but I need the hands-on touch, Rhonda at RK3 Designs. Rhonda and Kenny Draculis are the salt of the earth. They teach you everything you need to know how to do epoxy, walking you, holding your hand, teaching you step-by-step, Right hands on training. Rhonda teaches you the uh, uh, countertop finish. You all are released to your table. And then Rhonda, myself, RK, uh, Kenny, Clara Lawrence, oh, Keith from KCDC Designs, ATD is out there. We all come and teach you hands on how to, how to level up those pieces. It's epic. So when we're out there, we always go to a steakhouse. And whenever one of the guests or something asks for, for well done, they end up changing their mind to medium rare. Just, I'll leave, it, I'll leave it at that. So what about being behind the oven or stove? Okay, oh yeah, that's easy. So just pour that flat and install it. There's a job we did for Chris's dad where we did that. We poured his countertops on site, but we made little pieces uh, to install in the backsplash throughout the full height tile backsplash. It was way cool. And then we did a big, mm, I say it was, three feet by maybe two feet, maybe a little less than that, but it installed right behind the oven where you get all that grease. So it was way easier to clean that big, beautiful piece of epoxy behind the oven than travertine tiles that are actual stone and can absorb the grease. So that is a, that's a cool feature. And you can also tie your countertops into your backsplash that way. Is there any way you can do one with gray, red, and white? So, Rose Chapman, that's a good question, and that red and white is difficult. I've seen it done. Erica out of ATD at the last class did a really pretty piece. Whenever you run into red and white, you can get pink. So if you're not looking for pink, that's where it can get quite difficult. If I were to put some red over white and I hand melded it, it would start becoming pink. Uh, Erica did an amazing job at keeping them segregated and vivid without making Pepto-Bismol like I can do. So just practice, guys. That's where you make a little small sample board and that helps a bunch to know how these colors are gonna work. And that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for being here on a Friday. Uh, go subscribe to Artist Till Death, Clara Lawrence Art, RK3 Designs, KCDC Designs. Keith was with us out in Hawaii. That dude is awesome. He does some great work. He teaches you step-by-step -step on YouTube as well. Jump on over, KCDC Designs, and subscribe. He's this close to getting monetized. Get over there, binge watch, get my homie monetized. And that's what it's about, guys. We're one giant epoxy family. We mix up epoxy, show you what it looks like so you don't have to. Thanks for being here, guys. I'm picking winners on Monday. And until the next live, which will probably be next Friday, 
That's why we're going live. Luke is hardcore editing all this floor footage, which takes a lot of time. We need another editor in the house. Let me know in the comments below. You're looking for work. Guys, thanks for watching. Until next time from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this, and we'll see you on the next Epoxy Live.